My name is Jonathan Chaves, and the book is called Every Rock a Universe, The Yellow Mountains and Chinese Travel Writing. Uh, the Yellow Mountains uh, are one of the most beautiful places in China, and I would say in the world. And they have tremendous philosophical, emotional, and even religious connotations for the Chinese. They're named after the Yellow Emperor, Huangdi, hence the word yellow. And he is supposed to have been the founder of Chinese civilization. But during the period that I am interested in, the late Ming to early Qing or 17th century, China was invaded by the Manchus. And as a result of this traumatic event, many withdrew to the mountains as hermits, in some cases Buddhist monks, Taoist alchemists, they were looking for a kind of spiritual renewal, which the mountains represented for them. But they were also inspired by the sheer beauty of the mountains. And so painters and poets have been inspired by these mountains for centuries. I myself was introduced by a friend to a book of travel essays about the Yellow Mountains, written in 1696 but not published until the 1770s. And this friend was curating an exhibition on the Yellow Mountains and asked if I would translate a few of the essays. I did, and I fell in love with them and realized I had to do the entire book. It's never been done before in English or any other Western language. The essays were written by a man, Wang Hongdu, whose name has been almost completely forgotten today. Wang Hongdu was not only a superb painter, calligrapher, and writer of, I think, some of the most beautiful prose in the Chinese language, he was an outstanding poet as well. But his poetry has been almost completely lost, except for a handful of anthology pieces that surface now and then. In the Provincial Museum of Anhui Province in Hefei, I found two books containing his poetry one of which is extremely rare, and the other of which is so rare that it's a unique copy. And so I have added in this book an entire chapter on Wang Hongdu as a poet because he emerges, in my opinion, as one of the finest poets of his day. In fact, I'd like to share a short poem uh, of his with you. The poem goes, That flute of jade penetrating the void, which peak is it coming from? It ripples into autumn waves, roaring in 10,000 pines. I wish to ride the white phoenix, soaring to blue heaven, seeking there Prince Wang Zijin, treading his immortal footsteps. Wang Zijin is a prince who was supposed to have succeeded in refining the Dan, the elixir of immortality, upon which a white phoenix appeared from the sky. Wang Zijin got on its back and ascended beyond the heavens. Poems like this one that I just read bear witness to the, as I've said, religious feeling, the numinosity of the Yellow Mountains, drawing the souls of the poets, painters, and writers like Wang Hongdu, the monks, the Taoists, and the hermits who retired there. However, at the same time, there is no question that Wang Hongdu and his associates saw the Yellow Mountains not as a mere escape, but rather as a place where the ancient vibrancy of Chinese civilization continued to live at a time when ordinary people in the outside world, so to speak, were suffering under the invading Manchu regime. And Wang Hongdu, side by side with his poems about the Yellow Mountains, has written some of the most breathtakingly stark poems about human suffering that was taking place during his day. What we have here is the reality of suffering, the collapse of the Ming dynasty in favor of a foreign Qing dynasty, so-called, and as a counterweight against that, 
the hoped for spiritual and cultural renaissance and renewal represented for Wang Hongdu and his fellow writers by the Yellow Mountains. Those people who love the mountains, those who love travel, I think will find themselves entranced to experience one of the great, what is now one of the great tourist sites of China through the eyes of those who saw it not merely as tourists, but as pilgrims.